Hello everybody, welcome to this workshop. Here we're going to talk about how to extract productive figures from a data set uh, stored in a software. Uh, in this instance, we're using, or at least, SAP system. So uh, this is uh, figures from a warehouse where a group of people, um, Peter, Joe, and etc., work and receive these deliveries in from couriers. Um, the task of the managers basically extract those data that have been inputted into the system. So, as you can see here, operatives they input uh, different um, HU units and the amount of them into which date they were received. Um, that's going to go from, let's say, 1st of February all the way to 6th of February. So, this is a week's worth of productivity. Uh, so the task of managers, as I said, is to extract productive figures. Uh, the old way of doing it is to basically uh, manually, which takes about three hours to do. This is a real uh, life example that I've, I've taken. Uh, of course, I amended the names and uh, the HUs and the dates. So the, the, the uh, admin who does this calculations, he basically goes and writes how many boxes per per transaction, then it sums them up at the end. Don't forget, this is a 500, sorry, a 900 uh, rows. So it has to do that for all 900 rows, uh, for all HUs, that's for pallet cages, packs, sets, etc. And at the bottom of it, at the end of it, it's gonna total up how many. It's very laborious and takes a long time. So let's dive in into how to do this with a couple of clicks. So for the sake of this exercise, we're going to name this uh, folder or uh, workbook as good sin. And we are going to open another workbook. Uh, the reason being to do it from another workbook is in, ki in case you want to uh, do uh, uh, productivity for, let's say, the week after this week, which is, let's say, that from the 7th of February all the way to the 14th and you're going to save this file under the same uh, file which is a good scene then you can treat it in the other file which we are going to create uh, I know it doesn't make sense now but uh, trust me I will explain later on so now we have opened a new workbook um, uh, which is called productivity uh, so what we're going to do now we're going to use power query to uh, get the data from the goods in uh, workbook so in this new sheet you can name the sheet whatever you like uh, just going to just go to data then get data from uh, workbook and it's as we said we named it as goods in so we're just going to double click on that and it's going to bring the data so we've got good scene table here and uh, we're going to need we need to transform data before we do anything so now you've got the amount column and you've got the date column uh, as you can see the type of data is already defined uh, so date is defined as date and amount is defined as normal characters or general. So we need to split the column of amount. So we need to get the first of all we need to get the names of people out of the way. Let's say Peter, Joe and all that. We need to separate them. So we're gonna go split and then we're gonna split them by non-digit to digit. So that way we're gonna separate the names. So we don't need this column, so we're just going to remove it. Then we say we've got a, a column two and column three and column four, so we've got a thousand pallets and zero boxes. So we need to split basically the numbers away from the words. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do the same as the first one. So we're going to do split columns. And then we split this time by uh, by from digit to non-digit so we're going to remove those digits away from the words 
So that has worked as you can see and we're gonna do we're gonna do exactly the same thing for the rest. As you can see there's a plus sign but I'm not too worried about it later because the formulas will eventually uh, handle that. So so we're just gonna repeat the process for the rest of the columns. Uh, we're just gonna separate the numbers from the words. It's very simple, very easy. So, but we need to bear in mind where we need to change the types of data. So we need to change those uh, digits or numbers into whole numbers because of what they define just normal ABC as text, which is going to be which is going to create the whole set of problems later on. So let's do them at this stage. So every time you import data, it's just going to basically treat them the same way. So you don't have to do it all the time. So we're, just, we're going to do a close, close it and load it onto a table. So we have now a table. If, so the file here. So the purpose of doing this exactly through a Power Query is you, once you've got the folder, the origin folder, you don't have to go through the similar uh, basically processes we just went through. So let's say you've got f from week seven to week two, sorry, from the 7th of February to the 14th of February uh, or with the all new data. Once you download it to this table by just pressing data and refresh all, it's just gonna update the data. It's just gonna update the table with the new figures. And once we write all those formulas, you don't really have to go through the same process again. You've done it once, so you don't have to do it for, let's say, for week two, week three, week four, week five, or throughout the year. So let's let's start um, calculating these um, HUs, handling units. So let's say we've got a box. Um, here we cannot really use VLOOKUP. The reason is VLOOKUP is not designed to work backwards. So if we're looking for the word box in this range here, so if we're looking for box, let's or palette for instance, so we're going to find a palette but we need the number behind it. It's impossible to use VLOOKUP. So we have to use something else. We're going to use index and match. And that's the best formula for it, probably, that I know. So let's dive in. So here we've got, uh, uh, let's start writing the formulas. We've got equal, match, and a box. We're just going to change it to uh, H1. Uh, then we're going to uh, lock the row. Um, and leave the column so we can when we move the formulas over it's a lot easier for us then second the lookup array which is this array here this range where the boxes and pallets and the cages and stuff located and then we can use the exact match so that's gonna come back with very little result uh, and I'll explain why so the not to worry about the NA non applicable values is because there is no values there to find. So let's say we've got here we have number four, which is correct. It's because it's found a box in column four, two, three, and four. So it's found it in column four. To explain better, let's say we've got this array here, and that's column one. Column two, and that's column the, uh, sorry three, and that's column four. So in the array we were looking for, in sorry, we have four rows, and the, always the first one is one, and the second one is two, the third one is three, and that's second four. So you match the formula in row four. Um, but there is a problem here. So we've got boxes there, but we have no values there. 
and the reason being is because we set the exact match let's say we change the value let's say we said less than it's going to give us ev almost everything almost everything and that's not really ideal so we've got bags and pallets there with no box uh, because it's found the letter B and it's giving us anything with a B so let's change the other one now let's say minus one greater than uh, sorry I just put like a minus one and no values exactly so no whether we've got boxes and it still doesn't give us value that doesn't solve the problem so we need to put the exact match well we're going to look for a string so we look for the word box in the string let's say we look for the word box in boxes so really anything starts with either box or ends with box or uh, has a box in the middle and then the only way to do that is we used to use a string uh, in the formula and the only way to do that is by putting stars either side of the value the look of value so if you put star on concatenate value concatenate h1 with the star and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side so bear with me here we go and enter um so we still got no values oh it's because we said greater than so we need to change that minus one we need to change it to the exact match instead of greater than we're going to use the exact match and here we go so all the values now wherever there is a box the word box in boxes it will pick it up so so box is plus so that's why i said the plus looking for the value of the uh, the uh, let's say the thousand we're not looking for a pallet so if we do find pallet we need to look for the number behind it so we need to use index and match so here we go index with the row number so the row number is there is only one row so we're just going to use row one and the column number is is the is the match formula uh, to give us back the index of palette but we're not looking for index palette we're looking for the thousand number so the one behind it so we have to use the match formula minus one so we're just going to do just that minus one and then close parentheses enter and there we have it so we've got zero there boxes it returns zero we've got two boxes that returns two and we've got six boxes it returns the number six that's exactly what we are looking for then we need to get rid of the error by just simply writing if error and return the value and return nothing if there is no value and close parentheses and that is it now our data looks extremely clean and so look at look seven seven boxes it returns exactly seven it is no error it's very very accurate it's going to return exactly where you tell it to return so what we have to do now we're just going to shift that across and we get all the, the details all the answers for bags and sets and pallets uh, so the formulas really work great so what we're going to do now is basically sum up all the values we have uh, which is very very easy so okay let's get the so let's get the boxes rails bags there and we need to get the dates because the dates are dynamic so we need to copy everything 
and then we can remove duplicates and we can be left with the values I'm not gonna go through every single one of them and copy where is one where is two where is third of February so just copy the whole lot paste them then uh, then highlight them again and then press or remove duplicates from data uh, continue with current selection yes column M and then enter and then it's going to tell you how much data we're left with so we've got first to the sixth so brilliant now we need to look we need to sum up the boxes for date the first of February then we can replicate that with the rest so, so we, if we use sum if so where is the range say so it's the whole table and then comma then we're looking for the criteria which is the date uh, we need to lock the column so it's easy for us to shift it down and then with some rage is exactly the box to make sure you don't get the whole column just get the box column then close parentheses and it's going to give you the sum data for all that date so we're going to replicate that um, for the rest of the rails, bags and pallets and sets uh, so once that's done uh, we're going to do exactly the same downwards for the rest of the dates uh, just basically pull the data down for all the dates now we have all the data so the, really the bulk of the work now is completely done uh, we can just add the the total and sum it up uh, which is easy so we're just going to do uh, equal sum and then the whole line and then we're going to drop it down downwards so we're going to get the sum numbers and h4 for hus for all the dates so we can just do the total sum now which is equal sum the range of totals and then close parentheses and that is done so that's 765,776 handling units in a week so let's say we do change values here or we you know or we want to calculate the productivity for the week after um, that's so all those values will change of course with a new file as long as it's saved as good sin and we're going to change let's say the dates now to the 7th February to the 14th so bear with me while I do this while I speed this up uh, so we're going to do the 8th then we're going to do day number nine we're just replicating the productivity figures for the week after basically so once that's all completed really it should be a couple of clicks away to get all of the data we need for that week or any week really so that's that's the beauty of of, of, of having this setup and with just a couple of clicks you can calculate any productivity for any week so now we're back here to uh, so we we did data refresh and we got the week so if we just copy the dates again and then do the same thing again basically remove the duplicates so it's only a couple of clicks away and that's what's done once you remove duplicates yes and click ok so I'll go back up and we have exactly what we need so because last time we had only six days now we're just going to drop it down to calculate the remaining days and we're going to do recalculate uh, the total for the whole week 
so it's really really a couple of clicks away as i said uh, you don't have to do much because the power query once you refresh the data does everything so here we go so you can create really any productivity of any week it's very accurate and to the point uh, on the next video i'm going to take you into how to uh, minimize all this work uh, copying and pasting dates with just one click of a button using the macros and that's going to be fun so thank you for watching my video and um, please subscribe to my channel and hit that like button and i hope to see you soon on the next video thank you bye bye